This is how I got The Sims 1 game to play on my Windows 10 computer with no extra expansion packs installed. Note that if you do have all the expansions installed, I recommend following tutorials from Beyond Sims or others because the steps are a little more straightforward. But if you're here and you want to play The Sims on modern computers but don't have all or any of the expansions, this is the tutorial for you. So I'll be going through how to get The Sims Deluxe without additional expansions running, and then I'll go through installing a few expansions and getting it to run smoothly. A quick little disclaimer, this is a setup that worked for me and my system, so results may vary for you. Also, the patch files discussed are not supported by The Sims team or EA, so troubleshooting is very limited. Remember, this is a game that came out over 20 years ago, so we have to get kind of creative to make things work today. So there's three main things you want to have before we get started. You want to make sure you have a CD disk drive. I had to obtain an external CD disk drive for about 10 or $11 for my laptop. Second is you want to have all your Sims disks that you have available in the order that they need to be installed ready. So Beyond Sims has this helpful table that shows all the list of orders and you don't have to have all of the expansions, but I'm going to go through which ones you do need for things to work. And finally, before we get started, you're going to want to download the Sims individual patch files in the link I have in the description below. This will take you to the video of Computer Cat Tech, where in their description, the very first link is what you want to download. It's going to contain all the files for each expansion, except for some reason it's missing hot date. There is some nuance with installing the expansion, so I'll get to that later, but you're going to have this ready and unzipped, so it will look like this. To get the game running without any extra expansions, in my case, The Sims Deluxe, you're going to insert the CD into the CD drive, you're going to be prompted to install it, and just install it like normal. You're going to be prompted to install AOL aka the very first internet, so we could just ignore that. And so once you have it installed, this is where the customization comes in because if you try to play the game now, most likely nothing will happen. And so you're going to go to the patch files, you're going to find the file that belongs to the type of game you have. So for me, it's under the Sims Deluxe folder. And this probably will work for if you just have the base Sims game too, but I haven't tried it, so I can't speak much about it. Now, you're going to find that folder, and in another folder, you're going to open up where you installed the Sims. This usually is under the C drive, under Program Files, x86, Maxis, and the Sims. So you're going to open the Sims folder, you're going to scroll to where you find the sims.exe file. So we're essentially going to replace this file, but before you do, let's make a backup of it. And the easiest way to do this is just simply to rename it. I renamed it sims.old. And so that will essentially make it unusable, but you still have it there in case you need it in the future. And now you're gonna copy the patched file and you're gonna paste that into the Sims Maxis folder, the installation folder, where the sims.old is located. And you're gonna make sure you wanna have administrator privileges so you're able to copy and paste it. All right, so a few more steps to get this working. Now you're gonna right click on the newly patched copied file and go to properties. And you're gonna go to the compatibility tab and here you're going to go to change settings for all users. And then in that window, under compatibility mode, you're going to want to make sure run this program in compatibility mode Four is checked. So then you can change the drop down. For me, the drop down for Windows 7 worked. Other tutorials I've seen, they had Windows Vista work. Those didn't work for me. So you might have to toggle each one of these drop down settings here to see what works for you. The second thing you want to check is under settings in the bottom part, you're going to check run this program as an administrator. And now that you have those two settings checked, everything else you can stay the same, have them unchecked, 
click apply and OK. At this point, I was able to get my game to run. However, I still run into issues. For instance, it would run, but every time I clicked out of the game, it would essentially freeze the game, put a black screen, and then the only way I could close it was to do a control alt delete and close the application. So I'm going to show you how to have it running more smoothly. And right now we're actually going to find the Sims 800 by 600 application shortcut file. So you're going to want to search that in the start menu. If you don't have a search, you could go to the applications maxis folder and find it there. You're going to right click on this shortcut file and under where it says target, you're going to go all the way to the end and you'll see dash R 800 by 600 there. Before that, you're going to type in dash W and put a space in between that and the file path. You can also copy and paste what I put in the description and just completely replace the target as well. So essentially what the dash W does is makes it open in a windowed mode. So when you click out of it, it doesn't crash the game. And so you'll click apply and okay there. I like to use this shortcut file to run the game for my own setup. There's a lot of different tutorials out there that have custom configurations to run it in even bigger pixels or other applications and downloads you can install to have it run on your computer. But I like to keep it simple and I don't like downloading too many things. So I'm going to show you how I make it work on my computer, because if you were to run this right away, it shows up in a very, very tiny box because most of our computers have much more pixels than 800 by 600. So I actually go into my computer display settings and change the whole monitor to 800 by 600. And yes, it is annoying to try to work with the computer if you're not running the game and everything's extra big icons. But for me, when I run the game like this, I think it's optimal because it shows well, you can zoom in better, which I'll show in a bit. Whereas if you try to do any custom configuration to make it a bigger setting, it just seems too zoomed out for me. Side note, there is a second application file to run the game in 1024 by 760. I haven't gotten that to work on my own computer, so I just ignore it. So once you have your display settings changed, now you can run the game. It shows full screen. It runs like how I remembered back in the day when I first played this game and it runs pretty smoothly. And that's how you get the base game or no extra expansions to play. So we're going to get into installing a couple expansions in this part. It is a little bit more nuanced and some expansions work better with others. So I'll try to explain that the best I can because many of you might have some expansions and not all of them. For this, we're going to go back to our handy dandy table, which lists the order that you need to install them. Things to note about this list. It is okay to not have all the expansions, but if you install them out of order, you will most likely need to delete your entire game and start from scratch. So before we move on at this point, if you have any Sims games installed and have been playing them, I highly recommend making a backup. And so the way I make a backup of my save files is I go to the Sims folder in the C drive where the installation is, and there's these user folders, user data folders here, and they are actually numbered by the neighborhood number. So whichever neighborhood you use, make a copy of that folder, the entire folder and save it somewhere safe. For me, I've only been using the first neighborhood, so I just need to copy the user data with no number at the top and just make sure that's somewhere safe because if you delete your entire game, you might have to replace all the saves. You might lose your saves. And I'll make another video of how to configure saves as well and transfer saves, but make sure you have that backed up. So for expansion, some nuances I found. 
I was forced to actually install all the way up to Unleashed Pack to get anything before that to work for the expansions. So even though in the patch files that we downloaded, they have patch files for house party or vacation, those didn't seem to work for me if I tried to install them without Unleashed. So that's just one of the weird things that I noticed in my system. When I installed House Party alone after Deluxe, it kept giving this error and I wasn't able to run it. Then I had to go up the list like Hot Date, that one didn't work because there's no file. And then Vacation, that one didn't seem to work. And then I installed Unleashed and so that one worked. Um, other nuances I have to mention, I was able to install all the way up to Unleashed, but I didn't have Vacation installed and it was able to run. So you can skip expansions here, but it looks like the Unleashed one is the next expansion that actually works without having to install everything. I hope that makes sense. And it's not too confusing, but just note that you might have to have Unleashed installed if you want to use any of the other expansions. Um, you might be able to have it work with with Superstar and Making Magic as well. I don't have those installed yet, so I haven't tested those out. But for me, Unleashed was a necessary pack or expansion to have all the other expansions work. But it still allows you to play the game without all expansions. Lucky for me, I already owned Unleashed. I found the disc from decades ago that I had it, but you could also find it. They sell it on, sell the expansion packs individually on Amazon and other places as well. So for me, in this example, I installed House Party Next, then I installed Hot Date, then I installed Vacation, and then I installed Unleashed. And once I had all of those installed, then I go back to my patch folder and find the Unleashed folder and copy that sims.exe file into the Sims Maxis C drive installation folder. And we're just gonna basically wanna replace that file. Of course, make sure you still have the sims.old or the backup the, of the originals in there as well but replace that with the Unleashed one. And you might have to reconfigure the shortcut target here. If you set the settings for compatibility for use for all users, you shouldn't have to redo the compatibility, but you probably have to find the shortcut file for the Sims 800 by 600 again. Right click on that, redo the target to make sure that dash W is in there and it should work when running for you. So some troubleshooting that might help you along the way of issues I've run into. Sometimes I would open the game and it would open for a few seconds and completely close down. That usually means that I didn't follow all of these steps correctly. And sometimes that might mean you have to reinstall it. And if it doesn't open at all, then you have to redo the steps. Now uninstalling this game is not too straightforward. I ended up having to download this tool called Revo Uninstaller to find the files and uninstall it. You also want to maybe manually delete the entire Maxis folder from the program files before starting again. Of course, after you make a backup of your save file. All right, and that's how you play The Sims on Windows 10 computers if you don't have all the expansions. Hope this helped. Definitely let me know if this worked for you or if you tried something different. Feel free to add it in the comments as well. And thanks for watching.